The Reserve Bank of Australia has cut interest rates to an all-time low of 1%. This 0.25% cut follows last month's 0.25% cut, so is the first back-to-back -back cut since 2012. This means that rates have fallen from 1.5% to 1% since the election. Last month, RBA Governor Philip Lowe said that a single cut was unlikely to meet the RBA's goal of reducing unemployment. Yesterday, during the announcement of the second cut, he continued with that reasoning, but certainly didn't rule out further cuts. He said, "...it will assist with faster progress in reducing unemployment and achieve more assured progress towards the inflation target. The board will continue to monitor developments in the labour market closely and adjust monetary policy if needed to support sustainable growth in the economy and the achievement of the inflation target over time. The outlook for the global economy remains reasonable. However, the uncertainty generated by the trade and technology disputes is affecting investment and means that the risks to the global economy are tilted to the downside. Generally, rate cuts inspire one of two emotions. If you're a saver, you'll probably be mildly irritated as some term deposits are now offering rates well below inflation. If you're a home buyer or a mortgage holder, then you'll probably be mildly celebrating because you could be saving up to $700 a year on a $400,000 loan if your bank passes on the full rate cut. ANZ have announced they will pass on the full 25 basis point rate cut to all of their variable home loan customers, having been criticised for only passing on 18 basis points in June. Commonwealth Bank said they will pass on the full rate cut to interest-only loans, but only 19 basis points to owner-occupiers and investors for principal and interest loans. NAB have also announced a 19 basis point reduction for all of their variable home loans, having passed on the full 25 basis points in June. And finally, Westpac have announced that they will include a 20 basis point cut for owner-occupiers and a 30 basis point cut for investors with interest-only repayments. On the Australian share market, investors weren't too impressed with yesterday's rate cut. All of the big banks were down in late afternoon trade, with Westpac and Commonwealth Bank down over 1.5%. Although we have record low interest rates sweeping Australia, NAB's chief economist Ivan Colhoun stayed positive, stating that these interest rate cuts aren't necessarily an indication of an economic crisis. He said, "...we talk about emergency rates. In fact, very low rates are the norm around the world. Australia and New Zealand are coming to that normal a lot later than other countries. It may feel like an emergency, it doesn't look like an emergency to me, with unemployment being where it is, with the share market being at all-time record highs. I wouldn't consider it an emergency, even though they are the lowest rates we've seen in our lifetime." Bank of America Merrill Lynch Chief Investment Strategist Michael Hartnett calculated that since the global financial crisis, central banks around the world have cut interest rates 715 times. 716 if you include yesterday's RBA rate cut. Recently, he told his clients, "...we are investing in an era of irrationality, impotence and inequality. Interest rates are at 5,000-year lows." Managing Director at Market Economics Stephen Kukoulos takes little comfort from the global trend of tumbling interest rates. He said, "...I don't think anyone wants interest rates near zero or even negative. It really smacks of desperation. The European Central Bank and Japan are negative or zero. We don't want to go there. Their economies are very weak. Zero rates are bad news, designed to stop banks hoarding cash. Banks overseas seem happy enough to lose 0.4% of their money guaranteed, rather than 100% in riskier places. The RBA flagged they always have quantitative easing in their top drawer, however, that would require some pretty grim news or staggeringly low inflation before it would be considered. It is unclear whether they have done enough to kickstart the economy. Alex Joyner, Chief Economist at IFM Investors, believes that the RBA cannot cut much further. He said, "...some people would suggest the RBA can go to 0.5% before it has to consider unorthodox or unconventional settings. That would be unhelpful and have unintended consequences for the banks, further eroding margins and putting pressure on bank profitability. Banks are effectively borrowing from the household sector to lend to business. Rates are already very, very low, and you can't give depositors a zero return." Turn. And finally, as promised in the title, I will offer a few money-managing tips in preparation for an economic downturn. 
1. Reduce your debts. Yes, I know, borrowing money is cheap now, but it would be better to ignore the interest rate cuts and continue with your current level of monthly mortgage repayments. By doing so, you'll pay off your loan a lot faster, saving heaps in interest. Pay off your credit cards and personal loans. Saving interest on debt is far more attractive than earning interest on savings, especially in the current climate. 2. Live within your means. Don't use credit cards. Think about expensive purchases before you make them. Do you really need a monthly gym membership or that expensive mobile phone plan? How about eating at home more often, or buying in bulk when you spot a good special at the supermarket, or going camping for your next holiday instead of paying for a costly hotel? 3. Start an emergency fund. If you haven't got one already and have already paid off your most expensive debt, like your credit card, you should really be saving money for a rainy day. What if you or your partner loses their job? Even if you keep your jobs, it's nice to have enough cash to be able to pay your council rates, or car rego, or electricity bill. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope these recent interest rate cuts aren't an ominous sign of things to come. Hopefully the Australian economy picks up again, but unfortunately, unless the government start investing in jobs and infrastructure, we may just be on the inevitable path to recession.